Centurion makes a surprising standout here, and is that Luna Control with the Charmers making a splash too? Make sure you guys smash the little crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more awesome content. You know, it's very interesting to actually see Centurion Snake Eyes. Yes, you heard me say that correctly. This build attempts to bridge the gap with a lot of the innovation lines that we've kind of been following out here. And obviously, you know, the OCG doesn't have Crimson Dragon, so they have to find different ways to kind of supplement these different methods to make up the advantage tree. I think that doing the Snake Eyes play in here, giving you Link climbing defensive plays as well Apollosa, also with your level 12 synchro package um it's actually kind of interesting you know also flamber being guess what a level eight mm -hmm. next up here we have the power of Ubel, and i've enjoyed very much watching this deck do its thing now what's interesting is they're only playing one the loving forever defender in here Typically, I, I put a lot of stock on that super poly option, but this build is basically going to be using a lot of its extra deck options to kind of pressure the opponent out of the game, or at least try to push the game in your favor um, and be able to damage reflect all of that damage ASAP. Um, you do see that we do have the puppetry down here as well for a fantastic side decking option, but to be honest with you, Everything present for this absolutely looks amazing. All right, next up here we have huh, Tempai Dragons with some little bit interesting abilities back here. Kind of showcasing the Deltas in the main. You are able to go down the full Tempai Dragon Lions for protection. Um, yeah, I mean, well, protection. I mean, OTKing your opponent out of left field. You do see the seals in here to be able to go first. And you also do see that they are playing the mask down there. The Black Goat Laughs. <laughs> God, I love that name. Along with Red Reboot Feather Duster. This deck is just the full OTK gas deck that you naturally expect to see in order to win the game but okay i i like this moving on along out here we also had oh man this is going to be a recurring theme for this video how much snake eyes can we actually see you do see that we do play the omega pobbler in here i do like omega pobbler I think the card opens up some very strong doors for what you're kind of expecting to be running into in a lot of this environment. You actually do see the dramatic chase in here. And these OCG builds have been actually playing Silvera. Um, I didn't really think that a lot of people would try out Silvera, but to be honest with you, I think the results that the card tries to give to the meta feels actually pretty strong, so good stuff here. Next up here, ah, more Tempai Dragons. You know what's very scary about this list? The fact that it's playing Kaiser Coliseum. They can technically gridlock you on a Seals and on a Kaiser Coliseum because the Seals will just bounce split apart, which creates an entirely different scenario of problems that you're going to have to deal with. And that's not exactly something that I want to be dealing with while trying to play the current modern era version of this game. You know, Seals in a, or, uh, Kaiser Coliseum in a deck like this just proves how stupidly strong that the meta can be. And that's not necessarily a good thing, all right? Like, Kaiser Coliseum is an issue. All right, we have, oh, this is Fire King Snake Eyes. But this build is playing one copy of the Basham Sockham spell card that gives you the protection. You know, that I don't feel like that protection effect ever really comes up from the graveyard. You know, you're like, oh, okay, you know, this can be a little bit useful. You do see the appointers of the Red Lotus down there getting their full chance to shine. Okay, I mean, this is this is what you kind of expect to see in a sort of deck like this. Also, one of Skill Drain. Yeah, fire decks do love to see it, but you've got a lot of balancing acts to kind of go through with this. Also, the double Hita is kind of interesting. All right, what else we got cooking back here? Oh, we have a voiceless voice build. Um, actually sporting off double Nibiru in the main. So basically, the, they're getting the chance to see how good Nibiru can actually be. I see that we're choosing to play Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon in the extra deck for that Pendulum Graph option to be able to kind of toggle into. We did see Odd Eyes Winged Dragon being a pretty strong option in the very early days, personally, for this. But that's not what you're actually seeing here. And I actually think oh, having a little bit of a dial back on your option trees or trying to diversify your options can actually kind of help things out. So interesting to see what we're encountering with that. Next up here, 
Ha! Huh, more pure snake eyes. I actually think pure snake eyes has kind of taken to the lead here out of a lot of these results. You do see the monster reborn, the craziness that that card actually gives as an extension option. You do see that we are playing the heat soul in there to get those free draw cards. Don't underestimate the ability to get the full toggle options, start going up these crazy draw lines, and then have your opponent go, hmm, you know. I love getting out resource and out grinded. Yeah, that's that's kind of the whole big thing with us. You also do see double summon limit down there in the side deck as well for the the nopes. Oh, we have some magicians here. Okay, so um, one astrograph. Uh, Bill's playing one Mag C for the one cross out designator that might actually come up. That's a thing, I guess. Looking at this list. Um, you also do see the Gravekeeper's inscriptions down here for the high roll to be able to see, um, which is uh, kind of understandable. I mean, when fire format is such a pain in the butt and you need to see those cards to put that pressure down on your opponent, perfectly understandable. And you do see the double talents in the side. So this is pretty strong for a list. I, I actually quite like this a lot. And then we have, ooh, more fire. You know, imagine you go to a locals, you sit down to play, you're ready to play Yu-Gi-Oh! And then they do full fire combo and you're like, okay, I can break this board. And at the very end, they end on the Ambler Whale. And you're like, all right, I just got to break this. And then they activate Kaiser Coliseum on you. And you go, what in the world am I supposed to do about this? That is what this deck is doing, all right? You think all of that is something that you really want to deal with? No, not at all. But I, I just use that scenario to best accurately describe this list because that's the experience that it feels like. Just the the despair of the 10 minute turn is crazy to deal with. Next up is some Rescue Ace. Okay, now this is a little bit more, I guess, tolerable, um, but in terms of your innovation lines, yeah, they only have one emergency, which sucks that they actually cannot access that and go down full lines. But you do see the bonfires in here. You do see that we do have double Pobbler, so you know you can do the special summon, pull out original Sinful Spoils to go down, grab the Hydrant, and then start going up. I also do like the fact that even with all of the hits that this deck has, they're still only choosing to play two Hydrants, which is kind of wild to me. You might consider like, hey, you know, maybe I do need the third, but this list makes zero effort for that, which I think is good. Next up is more Voiceless Voice. This one's sporting off your Nadir package in here, so you kind of get the chance to see, you know, well, how, how does this deck interact with Nadir? Well, you end up dropping down Herald as per usual. Get your search options going. It's a lot of the same stuff that you're kind of already used to seeing. Uh, you do see the Super Polys actually being in the side. The fact that this build chose to put those into the side deck, I find a little bit interesting, but you've got a lot of options to kind of do your thing. You do see Odd Eyes Pendulum Graph with the Meteor Burst in here. So once again, you know, making use of the full power of that creature. Um, ooh, we have more fire in here. Man, oh man, I so much fire today. Um, you are playing the one of Malination for the board wipe. You are actually side decking Heavy Storm. You don't, I don't see a lot of Heavy Storm in these side decks. You would think that more of these duelists would make a, an effort to be playing Heavy Storm, but no, it just feels like they don't actually need it or you know they have enough oomph in their combo builds to be able to kind of do the things that they need to do of course more solemn strike defensive options yeah this build feels like it's got all of its bases now since the majority of these results for from teams we did have this anti-meta charmer deck show up where you do have, yeah, a fairy tale snow, you do have the cardamize in here, but your secret village locking your opponent while relying on your very small charmer package to kind of get things going in here. Also, you know, that's a 15 trap side deck down there that this deck is attempting to access in here and rotate in for whatever matchup it thinks it's going to need. And that's actually kind of crazy to think about that this deck is so desperately trying to hit all of these key points. Also, you're playing the mini underworld goddess in here, which is kind of cool. And our last list here is more Tempai Dragons. I would say that this is probably the most streamlined version of this deck that I've seen fairly recently out of the OCG. You know, you have so many hand traps in here, just trying to get to your filter options, set up, and then gas through whatever end board your opponent thinks that they're going to be setting up in here, which 
I do accurately think is the best way to approach this deck, you know? It's just hand trap filter and then an OTK engine to go second. If you go first, I mean, you have so many, look at those hand traps. You should be fine, all right? You don't exactly have to go crazy when you have that much of a field. So those are our innovations today. Please leave a comment down below, tell me what you guys think. I'll see your beautiful faces back here in day, guys. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.